We continue with our discussion of arrangement. We were in the middle of discussing the introduction, and so this is the second part of that. Cicero said that there are five kinds of cases. All right, so cases meaning um, issues. So when you get up to speak, there are five different kinds of um, speeches or cases that you might. Now, this would not contradict what Aristotle said about um, the three divisions of rhetoric, political, ceremonial, and forensic. But the, Cicero's five kinds of cases really deals with the, 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 the attitude of your audience towards what you have to say. Five attitudes that an audience might have towards what you have to say. Okay, so these five cases are honorable, difficult, mean, ambiguous, and obscure. Honorable, difficult, mean, ambiguous, and obscure. We must shape our intro introduction to the kind of case that we're facing. A mean case is not mean like your brother or your sister or your roommate or your teacher. But it is, the word mean in this case means average. Um, it really refers to the fact that people feel indifferent about it, apathetic towards it. They don't care. Um, you know, you can debate, as they do in biology class, whether phylogeny recapitulates ontogeny or vice versa. Is it phylogeny? I can't remember which one it is. Uh, but you can debate that, and you can have a serious debate about it, but your audience may very well not care. All right, in, a, in that case, when your audience is indifferent or apathetic, that is the most difficult case for you to um, introduce. What you must say in your introduction is that your audience should care, and you must show them why. In fact, not only must you show them why, but your introduction is a short, persuasive piece in itself, not disconnected from the rest, but definitely it is the front porch that is either warm and inviting and invites people in the door or a front porch that says, go away, um, as the doormat says often. Uh, I've noticed when I'm out canvassing, there's signs on the door. No longer welcome, <laughs> but uh, go away. Your introduction must convince your audience that the issue really matters, that it really is important. So you want to make them attentive to your case. So your introduction needs to explain why the issue matter, matters to your audience or why it should matter to your audience. And a, a mean case requires a direct introduction. An ambiguous case is a case in which the audience doesn't understand the issue or confuses the issue with some other issue. It is a doubtful issue. The doubt can include the doubt about whether it is an issue um, or what exactly the issue is. People aren't clear about it. It may also be uh, a doubtful case um, in that it's doubt the doubts are about the morality of the issue, um, whether it's right or wrong, whether what you're about to argue is right or wrong. Your introduction in, a, in an ambiguous case or a doubtful case, your introduction must clear the ambiguity, clear up the confusion about the case. You want to seek to frame the issue in a clear way so that you're taking up your position on defensible ground. This, this kind of case also requires a direct introduction. Thirdly, we have the obscure case. Uh, in an obscure case, confusion uh, exists about the arguments themselves. Um, the audience so far has not been able to follow the arguments um, used in support of an issue. The, the, the audience is confused 
All right, I think I agree with you, but I don't understand what the arguments are here in this case. That's an obscure case. In this case, your introduction should state your case and also probably you should state your position in the case in plain language, briefly explaining the points to be discussed. This, again, is a third case of the five cases so far. Three of them require a direct introduction. This is the third. Um, so a mean case, uh, one that the audience is indifferent about, an ambiguous case, one that the audience is confused about or doesn't understand the issue itself, or an obscure case where the audience may understand the issue but doesn't understand the arguments. Uh, all three require a direct introduction. This can make your audience receptive because in this case, you're being upfront with your audience. Um, you, don't, you have no secrets, no surprises. The time to have secrets and surprises is not when your audience is confused about the issue. Uh, you don't want to have surprises then. Uh, you want to be very clear and explain it. Chances are, if your audience walks away and says, I get it now, where they didn't get it before, then you, you've persuaded your audience. All right. Um, the fourth case is the honorable case. In an honorable case, your audience is clearly on your side and really doesn't need to be convinced of anything. In such a case, you might wonder, well, what's the purpose of me speaking at all? Well, but still, we like to be stirred up. We like to be rallied. We like to be excited about our um, plan or our guy or whatever. In the case of an, uh, in an honorable case, in this kind of case, when, when your audience is with you 100%, they, they understand the issue, they agree with your position on it, they're passionate about it, um, they understand all the arguments already, you're not going to tell them anything they don't already know. In that case, no introduction is necessary at all. You don't need to introduce um, you can get right to the point. Now, this is the case if the rhetor is respected, if the issue is not controversial, if the audience is attentive and interested. This would be the, the, the equivalent of a political stump speech or a pep rally, you know, one of those political speeches where your audience paid a hundred dollars a plate to be there because they're supporting your campaign. Um, you know, you in that case, you really don't have to um, have uh, uh, an introduction. A difficult case is the fifth kind of case. In a difficult case, the audience is hostile, either hostile to you or to your position or both. Now, you might think. That would be the most difficult. I would argue that the uh, mean case or the, the case where the audience is indifferent, doesn't care, is actually more difficult. Because when you have a hostile audience, they care. And actually, you have more ability to persuade that audience than you do the indifferent audience. In this case, in a difficult case, though, you do have to tailor your introduction to your audience. And it's very important how you do that. Rather than directly introduce your case, you should introduce indirectly using insinuation. I think, I think all of you or most of you read Mark Antony's um, argument. Um, I, I think that I assigned that for everybody. Uh, Mark Antony's um, funeral oration at the murder of Julius Caesar. That is an example of an insinuation, an indirect introduction. If you haven't read it, I would recommend it. It's in Shakespeare's uh, play, Julius Caesar. Uh, I can't remember the scene or the act, but it's where Mark Antony gives a funeral oration after the murder of Julius Caesar. Um, that's a great example of an insinuation. Now, there are five cases. We have discussed all five. The mean, the um, ambiguous, the obscure, all require a direct introduction. Um, the honorable case requires no introduction. 
And the difficult case with a hostile audience requires uh, an indirect introduction or an insinuation. Now, there are three kinds of difficult cases. Those three kinds are, first of all, where the audience is hostile. Secondly, where the issue is unsavory. And thirdly, where the audience is weary, tired, tired of the issue, tired of the debate, tired of the controversy. If the audience is hostile, Cicero taught you taught that you should admit that you have a difference of opinion with the audience. Admit it right off the bat. This is what Cicero said. If there's something scandalous in the case, a writer should simply admit that he too is scandalized by it, but should add that neither he nor members of the audience are tainted by the scandal. If the issue is unsavory, admit it. Admit that it is. Be ready then to attack the strongest argument against you or your position. Deal with that first. If the audience is tired, you deal with that kind of audience because a tired audience is also hostile towards you. And you deal with it a little bit differently. In that case, when the audience is weary and tired, promise to be brief and keep the promise. Make sure you keep the promise. Now, we need to discuss the purpose of the introduction. We've discussed the different kinds of, pardon me, of introductions. Let's talk about the purpose. The purpose of the introduction is to make the audience attentive and receptive. We make the audience attentive by showing the importance of the issue and by showing how the issue affects the audience, how it affects, in fact, everyone in the audience, and how it affects even people beyond the audience, how it uh, affects the general good of the larger community or larger culture. So these are ways that you make your audience attentive, um, showing them that this issue matters. This is important. We also need to make the audience receptive. And we do that by showing the audience goodwill. Really, we make them receptive, not by something we say directly, but by our tone, by our demeanor, by our level of preparation, and so on. Showing the audience goodwill. Goodwill, the ancients taught, goodwill is to be had from our own ethos, our own reputation and demeanor within the speech itself, from the passions and emotions and attitudes of the audience and by you stirring up those emotions the right way and from the case itself. Now, again, notice the ethos, pathos, and logos um, that are evident and, and present in that. You make your audience receptive with those three things. From ethos, remember ethos has to do with the audience's perception about you. We want to strengthen our own ethos while at the same time weakening the ethos of our opponents. That's why in political debates, we're in a political season right now in political debates, you'll hear the politician complain that the other person is attacking them or being unfair or criticizing them unfairly. Um, that kind of thing really has to do with um, strengthening our ethos and attacking. A bully in our, our culture generally looks down on a bully. Um, and if you can paint yourself as the victim of some kind of, uh, kind of unfairness, you gain the sympathy of your audience, they're willing to listen to you. Now, that does not mean that we should, in a sophistical or deceitful way, play the victim. Um, I actually, on a personal level, I hate playing the victim. I hate seeing people play the victim. But nonetheless, it can sometimes be necessary. And if you have been treated unjustly, um, and your, your um, opponents have been treated you unfairly, 
um, it is okay to say so. You need to make sure you demonstrate it. From pathos, we want to show respect for our audience. Our audience needs to feel respected. If they feel respected by you, they will be much more likely, uh, and they will find it much easier to be receptive to you. And then from Logos, we want to cast our position in a positive light and the position of our opponents in a negative light. We want to say that our position and our arguments are good and theirs are not good. That's the introduction and a more in-depth look at the introduction. We'll pause and come back to the second part of discourse, the narratio or the statement of facts.